C'est très son utile à euh, acheter cette jante de pompe à essence parce que c'est très facile à fabriquer soi-même. It's so useless to buy this gasket because it's so easy to just fabricate it yourself. So, let's see how it's done. I have this uh, just simple gasket material, paper, and uh, well, just place it on there, mark the positions and the shape of it, and then just cut it off. When adjusting the valves, uh, the time valve timing, it is interesting because in the book, uh, Citroen advises us to adjust here uh, 0.20 millimeters uh, here with the feeler gauge uh, when the cam is uh, pointing inwards there and. Normally, on every car, you do it here, but for the GS, it is advised to make the adjustments adjustment here. And I don't actually know if there is any big difference, but uh, let's try do it the way, uh, this way, like uh, the Citroen original manual uh, says. Well, we're pretty close to test start the engine. Uh, I have moved it to the test bench and uh, I thought I, I could as well uh, explain a little bit how easy this test bench is done. Uh, everyone can see this is a DS dashboard and uh, I use it just for basically for having the display of the oil pressure with this lamp. Uh, of course, I have the rev counter and I also have this temperature gauge so if you want you can have this you can put this uh, sender unit down into the dipstick tube and uh, it will pick up the oil temperature it's very handy uh, then we have the usual ground going down to a oops let's see here the battery clamp and there is also ground going into the dashboard device uh, we have a positive, the big uh, positive, going down to a clamp, you can see down there. And there is also a plus cable going into the, to the device, to the dashboard. Uh, then we have a sender for the oil pressure. That one goes in here, into the oil pressure lamp. Uh, we have the, let's see what else do we have here, we have these two, uh, instead of fiddling with a screwdriver here, uh, making mayhem with, with sparks and, and shit, uh, I just have this easy little starter button. It's a, it's a headlamp washer wiper to GS, since it's spring loaded I want to have this model, so 
very easy done. Uh, then we have the cable into the distributor and there's two cables because we need to have one of the cables to the rev counter because the rev counter is basically counting the opening and closing of the points inside the distributor. That's how it works. And today we have connected something else on this engine because this carburetor got this uh, idling cutoff switch. So when you when you cut off the ignition, you close the carburetor inlet, um, the the uh, gas coming into the carburetor. So therefore, I have this little switch here on and off. Otherwise, we can't have any proper idling I think that's it yeah and then we have the coil of course going up to the distributor and yeah so we're basically um, we're basically just uh, copying the the way uh, the engine is uh, connected when it's inside a car yeah now of course we have a little gas tank here uh, you can uh, connect it to the to the pump or uh, we can make it easy and just use this uh, I have this bottle with a with a little hose on it just connected directly there and I just just feed uh, uh, feed uh, the uh, carburetor with with uh, gas that usually usually is enough to make it start and run for some seconds there we go. I also have the exhaust system to the to the to this this uh, device too, and I'm planning to w when I redo this because this is so simply done. I I, I made this f years years ago. I think it was in two thousand three or something, uh, and it's very easy done. So I didn't put that much effort in it because. I didn't plan to have this in this uh, <laughs> in this shape, <laughs> this version of it, for so long. Uh, but the next uh, thing is to have an inbuilt muffler there, so you have a complete device. Everything is inbuilt. Uh, yeah, how about that? So now that we have uh, put this funnel on there, we can uh, fill oil directly down in here so that we don't ruin this high performance machine. Now we're just going to want to pour oil down there, let it sink down and uh, then I'm going to just try to hand crank very, very careful. So we don't want to have any oil spillage over this clean engine we should see the oil starting to pump up there and there comes the oil down from the pump and then we know that the pump is filled with oil and that the uh, It will pretty easy and pretty fast fill up the oil filter and uh, then we know we're, we're gonna have oil pressure inside the engine pretty fast. Uh, coming closer to start up the engine, uh, I want to see if we have spark. I have uh, restored this uh, distributor with new parts and uh, everything should be uh, should be adjusted to the right specifications. Uh, so there should be spark but uh, you never know with new parts 
maybe they don't work. So we need to find out. So what I do is basically I just take a spark plug. Uh, by the way, I uh, I have these uh, spark plugs in this uh, this box because I uh, yeah I basically want the engine to purr like a kitten when it starts. Anyway, uh, so I just. Uh, I used to put a spark plug in there, there I think, I just put it somewhere where we have, where we have ground. I don't want to have the connections done, otherwise it will be surprising when nothing happens. There, then, and um, ignition on. Let's see if we have any kind of spark here. What do you think? Well, that was spark. Uh, there is an issue with new parts. Uh, new uh, points uh, will probably be oxidized uh, on the surfaces, on the contact surfaces, uh, because they have been sitting for like uh, 40 years in a box. So always, uh, always file them or sand them. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're gonna you're gonna wonder why you don't have any spark. It's it's usually the point that is oxidized. Perfect. We have spark. Then let's go and buy some gas because all gas is. I don't think I have any gas. No. Then we can start it up. Exciting stuff. Uh, it is very easy to remember how this, those different cables should be located in the distributor cap. Uh, when you stand bes before the engine, when it's in the, in a car, like here you see, front of vehicle. So this is how you would see it when you open the hood. Then we notice that. I can have something to point with here. Wait. Uh, then we notice that the first one, cylinder number one, on the same side as the cylinders are sitting. On this side, they are following the position here. Exactly like the position here. So this one at like two o'clock uh, is that one two o'clock this one goes down there yeah so th this is very easy to remember on the same side as the distributor we have the same location of the cables like in the distributor cap but on the other side it reversed so right side right locations left side opposite uh, locations so this one that, that is up here at uh, 10 o'clock, that is the one that goes down there. So it's very easy to see on the, on the this is how it should be. Uh, you should see it when you stand before the vehicle. So that one goes there, that one goes there. And on the other side, it's the opposite. Makes it very easy to remember. I, I used to think about which side is the distributor? It's on this side, on this side, it is the same. On the other side, opposite side, it's the opposite. Enough talk, let's start the engine. So what we did now was to borrow my daughter's uh, ear protections, because they're pink and that's fancy. And then we just uh, wanted to make sure we have idling and then I did it this easy way. I filled up the carb with some, some gas. Ignition on. Let's see what happens. I just wanna find the carburetor.
fine tune it, uh, warm it up, uh, see if I can have a, a nice idling so I can let the engine just stand idling uh, calmly on like eight, seven, eight hundred RPMs or something. Maybe I should take these off so I hear what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> 